Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, wish you, uh, we actually thank you for joining us for this third session with the Spain collection, which is about uh, family travel in Spain and Portugal and different things that can arrange uh, for your clients when traveling with kids. Uh, and uh, of course, when kids are happy, the parents are happy. And oh, you up, my line. <laughs> <laughs> and can um, really have a successful trip. Uh, before we move forward to introducing you know, the panel, the panelists, I want to make sure that you, you are aware that we're recording this session. We will be um, sending this recording with a follow-up, but and we encourage you to ask questions or chat with us throughout the um, session so then we can answer those questions um, either right away or, or uh, e uh, either after each um, session uh, you know, of um, our panelists. So um, again, thanks from, from my side as well. Uh, the team uh, from Spain and Portugal collection is all here. They're all practiced. They're all ready to share with you their experiences that each of them can offer and specialize in the, in the different regions and areas of Spain, which is an amazing destination. Um, and I really, really hope that you will all engage as much as possible um, with us here. Um, if your questions pertain to anything outside of family travel, of course, at the end, we'll be happy to address any of those things as well. As last week, we did a wonderful, um, or two weeks ago, we did a wonderful series on the traditions in Spain and different planning your trips around different festivals and, and uh, very important, you know, traditions in the different areas. So um, you can always go back and watch those as well. Uh, we will continue the series after this as well with a few more interesting topics, so stay tuned. But for now, let me introduce the, the founder and star of, of uh, Spain and Portugal collection, our dear friend who we met during the pandemic and, and uh, we, we pulled each other through is uh, here is Abene. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm laughing because this story is going to be like the never ending story. Uh, Brad is always telling how we felt in love that day, and I, mm -hmm. I never thought they, wanna, they, they, they were going to accept my company because it was, uh, the company is 22 years old, but the brand was quite new, and I thought, oh, well, these people are important, they, maybe they don't accept us, but they did, and they, <laughs> oh, no. the, truth, the truth is that um, despite the bad times and everything we are going through and in that part i send all of you my solidarity in a personal and professional um, way uh, let me tell you that we are enjoying this time because we are rediscovering spain and portugal my team is is showing me amazing places that i i i, I wonder and i say oh my god how couldn't I, I know this place because we are having the, well, the time and the process of the Spain collection is exactly that one is looking for these small boutique places that can be privatized by you and come with this time. Today we are talking about kids with your kids, with your pets, with your family alone. And uh, Spain Collection is the company, in my opinion, sorry uh, to say that, that is really rediscovering the country of Spain and Portugal. And here we are to help you and to welcome you whenever we can, the sooner the better. And very excited and thrilled to have you all today here listening to us. Let me introduce you briefly, um, the team, because one of the things that to me, what actually makes us different from other companies that, that we are distributed through the whole uh, geography, right? We have our general manager, Olga. She, she's a very tough general manager. We have, to, <laughs> to, to, we have to do all the homework very well on time, you know. Uh, we have JG as the vice president of the company, and he's the person who questioned you question everything. Anything you tell JC, he's going to say, well, let me point this. Why it is? Why not? Why? Well, well, he wants the perfection of the company. And I agree. Uh, then I have Sonia. Sonia is, um, is working with me personally. Uh, I, I cannot say that she is my assistant because she's too old to be an assistant. 
<laughs> but no, she's um, she's uh, twenty years working with me already. She's, uh, and she knows everything about the Basque Country. That that um, you will that we have in the north of Spain, and you will be willing to know. And then Carlos, he's he's the one in Madrid, guys. He's uh, he's the one uh, in Toledo, in Madrid, in all the, those villas that you can privatize and do like hunting or bird watching or just having a nice wine in the wineries around the city. Marina is in charge of the social media and I love the way, the style she uses. So far we are quite well positioned and we hope you all follow us in uh, Instagram and LinkedIn. And John is the last one, the last incorporation of the company but it doesn't mean that he's not important because he's gonna um, he's he's gonna be someone here. He's an engineer, and as you all know, engineers now have a place in tourism because we are working with so much technology, and we still have Lily from uh, South Spain. Um, she's having a break for a while, and uh, she knows everyone. You know, you want to see the bull. Um, the fight, uh, the main square, she's going to bring you there with the, with the right person and the small wineries of South Spain and, you know, horses, everything. So, yeah, we are a team and we are distributed, and, uh, but we, we meet a lot. We go a lot to Madrid, to Barcelona, because we are talking a lot, which is something that on a day-by-day -day basis we can't. You don't have the time and now we can do it. So this is my team. I feel very proud and this is our new brand in an old company. So welcome everyone. Thank you. I guess we leave the word to Olga to, to, to start the presentation and, uh, and I, I can't wait to learn what things you, you prepared for us today. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we are doing a webinar today on how to travel around Spain and Portugal with families, with children. And we are using our expertise, not only as uh, travelers or as a uh, destination experts, but also as parents. In, in this group of people, you have three who are actually in the process of rehearsing how to make children. Uh, you have Sonia who has a little one. Uh, Bene has two small, but one is almost a teenager. JC has two teenagers and I am two large, big teenagers, almost uh, an adults. So we've been there, we felt your pain. And I hope that with our advices as of now on, you will know how to handle your clientele in our country, even if they have kids with them. Um, I'm gonna ask my team to switch off the cameras for everyone except for JC because he is the first to go. So JC, you're up. Hello everyone. Well, thank you once again for joining us in this uh, third uh, you know, webinar with uh, all of you. So today, as Olga was saying, we're trying to point out those activities that you're always thinking, how can we manage to bring our families with us? Or what can we do as a family together with our kids or teenagers in Spain or uh, Portugal? So in my case, I'm going to be covering two areas. One of them is La Rioja and the other one is Salamanca, eh, which is where I happen to be based uh, myself. Starting with the first of them, which is La Rioja, we know that for a lot of people, that's a destination that you may identify rapidly as an adult destination because of the wine. And that's very true, but it is also very much suitable for kids as well. That's why we have planned an activity that involves chocolate. So once you put chocolate in any activity, you know, chocolate is a lot of fun. So we have an activity planned that is also obviously uh, available for adults, but we have prepared one specially for kids and teens. So it's a hands-on activity. We have our chef there who happens to be one of the best pastry chefs in Spain. He actually was awarded as the best pastry chef in Spain. So the activity is so much fun that we can accommodate different formats. One of them, it's like a master chef program. Those 
you know, the programs you have on TV that they're competing to see who prepares the best, uh, the best desserts in this case. But we learn all about chocolate from the beginning, the production, how it's becoming from a bean to a saxophone. I know that's hard to believe, but it's the same process, okay? Chocolate to a saxophone. And once again, the most important thing is that it's a workshop. So we will work at the atelier from our chef. So the bakery itself. So he is a professional uh, pastry chef, as I'm telling. And we can use either his workshop or we can accommodate this master chef program, TV program format onto a different space. Of course, in a winery as well, since we are in La Rioja. So it's very easy to combine the winery for adults and at the same time to try to do this workshop. So if you put the next one, Olga, please. You see that is hands-on and he is an artist. So everybody loves getting their hands dirty into chocolate. Don't tell me you don't because everybody does. So once again, the most important thing is that you can combine activities for the whole family. Uh, you will learn how to do, for instance, chocolate truffles eh, with wine. Don't worry, no alcohol and no driving involved. So the second activity we have planned, it's in the city of Salamanca, eh, which is street art or urban art in the city of Salamanca. Why Salamanca? Everybody says all the time in my team, oh, there goes JC with Salamanca, there, of course. But in this case, look at the first upper left picture. Okay, that's a Victor. That's a new one from the 20th century. But we had graffiti all over the city of Salamanca related to the university. So when you get your doctorate, you're, you were able to paint victory, I succeeded. So I won somehow. And you were able to put the name Victor with those letters in different uh, positions, different styles, and your name as being a doctorate from the University of Salamanca. And that tradition has more than 500 years of history. They used to paint it with the, uh, the blood from the bulls and a little bit of oil. Now it's more sustainable. So we're using non-CFC sprays to paint graffiti. And we count with the help of a professional uh, graffiti street artist who happens to be also a very good illustrator. He's a good friend of a Spain collection. You can see him doing some work in my place. That was my actual place. And we can also combine different formats for them. So they can start learning how to do lettering. You know how graffiti is so interesting when it comes to do the different lettering. And we can also have different themes. As I told you, you can see some of his work in the upper right corner. He's doing illustrations for a national TV program here in Spain. And we can again, put Star Wars, Stranger Things, I don't know, we can just put any theme uh, your kids might be interested at. It's very curious how a lot of cities are changing. So this is not just a new trend, but we understand that now graffiti artists are not running in front of the police. So don't worry about having that problem with your kids, because again, it's changing how the neighborhoods are seeing and perceiving street art. In many cases, they're actually changing the complete and entire view of the neighborhood socially as well. You have in the United States in San Francisco, Balmy Street, for instance. Here in Salamanca, we have El Barrio del Oeste, which is uh, the Western uh, neighborhood, and it has changed a lot. Uh, so it has gained value. And now there are people coming to Salamanca just to do art tours based on street arts. So we can have different formats, as I was telling you, we understand how complicated it is to bring a full wall back to the US. So we normally use canvases that can have a layer of paper. You can then roll down and bring back home whatever you painted when you were here with your kids in Salamanca. So I hope you like that one. Vote for that one and we'll prepare one specially for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, JC. That was quite inspiring, especially the Star Wars part. I particularly love that. I know. Uh, now we're gonna leave behind the outskirts of Salamanca and we're moving towards my neighborhood. We're going um, now to connect with Marina. Marina, put your camera on because now you're up. Hello everyone, hola a todos. 
Thanks for joining. Uh, let me introduce you to two great activities that you can do with kids uh, around Barcelona. Um, as you may know, one of the main things to do in Barcelona is uh, visiting Gaudí masterpieces like Sagrada Familia, Casa Bayo, Parguey. It is one of the highlights of our city because of its personality. Uh, Antoni Gaudí was a revolutionary architect. He was obsessed with nature and his works uh, were inspired by the natural geometry. Also for him, uh, everything was gray in the cities and always wanted to bring powerful colors into his buildings. One of the most famous art techniques from Gaudí is the trencadís, a technique uh, used to cover structures with a mosaic of irregular pieces of ceramic, glass or marble tiles. The story about it was that uh, one day Gaudí visited the ceramics workshop of a Catalan artist and when he saw how slowly he was putting all the pieces in place, Gaudí got impatient, uh, grabbed a tile, broke it and said, we have to put them on by the handful or we will never finish. Uh, he, liked it, he liked also to, to use the forgotten tiles from the fabric so he could uh, as well save money and recycle materials. So we could say that um, he was already a pioneer in the eco-friendly construction. So here we suggest to do a visit of uh, two of his main artworks, Casa Bajo and La Pedrera, located both uh, in the same street in Paso de Gracia Boulevard. We will explain here all about Gaudí and highlight his Trencadís artworks so kids can take photos uh, for their own artwork. And afterwards, after the visit, we will invite a Trencadís artist to show all the family how they can create their own Trencadís masterpieces. We will do this workshop in a private room in La Pedrera, which is uh, amazing, this room. They can do a photo portrait or any kind of shape, break their tiles, combine the colors they like, and they will be able to take it back home and have a very nice souvenir handmade by themselves uh, of something that is typical from, from Barcelona. We also have an alternative. If parents prefer not to do the art workshop, we have an alternative for them, which is uh, taking a private visit of one of the last private apartments of the building. A Catalan writer uh, is the last neighbor of La Pedrera. Uh, and she is a good friend of a Spain collection. And sometimes uh, she's open to receive uh, visitors. So now um, let me talk about another great activity that you can do, which is related to, to the famous TV show Game of Thrones. If you are a fan of uh, Game of Thrones, you will probably know uh, many places in Spain were used to film this TV show. One of the main filming locations uh, was the medieval city of Girona, which is uh, north uh, from Barcelona. Uh, Girona was used for the sixth season, where the old town represented the city of Bravos. Uh, Girona, it's honestly a beautiful place to visit. It is located a one hour driving distance, more or less, from Barcelona. And I will always suggest, suggest it to everyone. Uh, because it is one of my favorite day trips. It is a city full of history, culture. Uh, it's a jewel for all kinds of travelers. The old part of the city is a labyrinth of narrow streets that transports everyone back in time. Uh, here you will find one of the best preserved Jewish quarters in Europe, where most of the scenes of Game of Thrones were filmed. So here in Girona, we suggest to take a day trip uh, to Girona, where the whole family can spend some time having fun and recreate scenes from Game of Thrones on the most representative film and locations. We will arrange um, a private guided tour, so guests will get to know the amazing history of this magic place. And we will give a touch about Game of Thrones. And here it comes as well the fun part. We will bring some costumes and a photographer to take professional pictures or, or short films of the family members recreating the, the famous scenes. 
And again, if parents feel like they could take a time off, we can arrange as well a private visit to one of the most beautiful buildings of the city. Or maybe they could use this time to enjoy a local wine and, and food tasting. The city offers many things to do. It is a place that uh, every time I go there, I discover new places. So I really hope to see you in Barcelona or Girona and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Marina. Uh, talking about experience, I have done that myself with my kids. At the time they were 13 or so and they had their costumes and it would allow me to be able to wander around the city and stop here and stop there while they were taking pictures or writing a notebook or following and in the end they would get to do some some filming and it, it simply was a blast something they could really really show off so thank you so much marina for that um, from uh, Barcelona, we're going to be transitioning now to Madrid, to the kingdom of King Carlos, our King Carlos. So, um, you're up. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. And hello to everyone. Thank you for joining us again. I'm going to present you uh, two activities that we can do in Madrid. And you're going to see that the activities I'm suggesting you, both of them are based on music. And that's because, well, music is an universal language and we know that all kids love dancing, singing, playing instruments. And it's uh, as well a, a very good option to discover the culture and history of, of the country you are visiting. So the first activity is a masquerade workshop. This activity is based on the musical The Lion King. Uh, this musical has been running in Madrid for 10 years now. Um, I don't know if many of you know, but Madrid is a, it's a city with a lot of musicals. We are, in fact, the third country with, uh, with more musicals in the world, just behind New York and London. And um, people really love to go to these musical theaters that are located uh, downtown on our Gran Via, which is like your Broadway. And this musical in particular is very popular. Uh, I know you have that musical in, in the US, but if you are in Madrid, you have to experience that the Spanish way. And the Spanish way is basically mingled with, with everyone. So of course we can purchase the regular tickets for you, but there are other two options. Uh, we can provide VIP tickets with, it, with this option. You can visit the backstage and see how the actors and singers get ready with the costumes, the makeup, how they practice the, the choreographies. So it's a very nice option to interact with them and, and leave the musical from, from the inside out. And there, there is another option, which is actually my favorite one. And this is a private workshop. Um, there in the musical theater, you're gonna see by an artist who works in, in this show, how these uh, animal puppets are, are made and used by the artists and you can, uh, you can handle with them. And if you have kids, if you are with them, uh, they can get dressed up with these animal characters and the makeup and they're gonna have a lot of fun because it's really an immersive experience. It's like that you are living the musical because you are in it. Uh, the musical, of course, is in, a, in Spanish because we are in Spain. But that shouldn't be a language barrier because at the end of the day, everybody knows um, the songs of the, of the Lion King. And if your kids are learning uh, Spanish at school, we can provide a Spanish teacher so they can practice uh, some Spanish during that activity. The second one is the flamenco experience. Um, you know that flamenco is an, an internationally renowned art form and that's the trademark of Spain. Um, this uh, experience, uh, this art form is very related to Madrid. You will see that the roots of the flamenco uh, seem to lie in the Romani uh, migration that came to Spain from the 9th to the 14th centuries. And since then it was influenced by other cultures that we have uh, in Spain during that time and especially in Andalusia like the Arabs, uh, the Christians, the youths. So it's a kind of hybrid music with a lot of influence. But this art form in particular is very much related to Madrid because even 
uh, Sevilla is it's considered the capital city of the flamenco because it's the capital of Andalusia and is where the flamenco was influenced by all that cultures. In Madrid, it is the city where all the flamenco artists need to come and perform in our tablao. So if they want to be professional and recognized, they need to perform in Madrid. So that's why we have the best tablaos in Spain. In the tablao, you can, you can see a, a, a live flamenco show, but you can as well do a private workshop. And that's uh, what we are suggesting you. In this workshop, you're going to learn three subjects of the flamenco. Just to make you an idea, the flamenco um, has three um, expressions that we call disciplinas. And these are uh, called um, baile, which means dancing, cante, which means um, singing, and toque, which refers to the instruments that are played in the flamenco. So in the workshop, you can practice the easiest three ones, which will be the dancing, you know, in the dancing, when you see the, the flamenco artist dancing, there is a lot of about improvisation, but uh, even though the movements are based on some basic steps, so you can learn some of them, for example, the tapateado, which means like tapping with your feet on the platforms, which are these, these uh, platforms made of wood, which are called actually tablaos. And, and the females, as you can see on the picture, the female dancers, they use these manila shawls and they move them and it's something very beautiful to watch. And you can even buy them because it's a very beautiful souvenir for the women. And then we have other two subjects to learn. One of them will be the box drum. The box drum is basically a box and it's very, it's a lot of fun for, for the kids because actually you just sit on the box and slap. And, and we, we all know that kids uh, love slapping things, so that will be something very fun for them. And the, the third subject you can learn are the castanets. The castanets are actually two pieces of wood, like this one that I have here with me. So they are just uh, joined by a rope and you just put it in your fingers and you have to strike each other. It seems easy, but it's not. I can guarantee that because I have been practicing all the week for, for, the, um, for the webinar, but I, I'm able to play that. Just to make you an idea, they look similar, but they are different. So we have the female one, which is always played with the right hand, and it is called female because it reaches the highest tones. And then we have the, le the male one, which is played with the left hand, and this marks the, the rhythm. So you have to strike like this. You see, I play horrible, but uh, if you are in Madrid, you can go to one of our private shows, uh, private workshops, and they will teach you uh, with a proper teacher, you're gonna learn that. So thank you for your time, and I'm very happy to, to welcome you here in Madrid very soon. Thank you so much, Carlos. That was a lot of fun. Hey, what is that? Oh my God. <laughs> So these, these, these are from uh, my first uh, trip to Spain back in 19, mm -hmm, uh, when I was a student there. But I've, I've been trying to learn to play them ever since. So maybe you can teach me when I come. <laughs> yeah, I'll do. I'll do. I mean, I, I think it's better if a proper teacher teach you that. <laughs> because I've been trying that, but it's really... I'm it's sure I'm going to <laughs> I, I, I just have the looks, um, you know, when it comes to pretending, I can pretend to be a dancer and I have fooled proper dancers, but I am, I am, I am. The next time I want to see your dress, Olga, because you know you have one flamenco dress. I know, I know. The, the, the next time we'll find a subject and it will be appropriate for me to wear it. No problem. Thank you, <laughs> like Thank you so much, Carlos, for, for your you. time. Um, now we're going to be transitioning to uh, Portugal and Ibiza, so coast to coast in a way. And for that, I'm going to request the presence of John. So John, put your camera on, waiting for you. And um, it's all yours. There you go. Thank you very much, Olga. Uh, hi, everyone. Hola a todos. So indeed, uh, we're going to be talking about two more destinations, in this case, uh, Portugal and Ibiza. So let's start with uh, Portugal and the Harry Potter experience, and more precisely with uh, Porto and Coimbra, both uh, UNESCO World Heritage sites. So you might be wondering why magic or Harry Potter and Portugal, right? Where is the connection? Where is like the relationship? Well, 
So J.K. Rowling, the famous British writer, uh, actually lived for more than two years in the early 90s uh, in Porto before writing his, uh, no uh, her novels of Harry Potter. So the legend says, and rumor has it, that she got inspired in some of the corners and uh, spots of these two picturesque uh, cities. So we would be doing a walking tour themed in Harry Potter footprints. So to get immersed on the, this magician teenager uh, universe, uh, kids would have the chance to dress up like the, like the movie characters and actually walk around the tour with a magic wand. And we all know that kids absolutely love that. So um, we would be doing like uh, different stops throughout the tour. And obviously we'll be passing by some of the spots that um, presumably um, Rowling got inspired by for the, for the movies and for the novels. Some of them, for example, would be one of these majestic libraries in the heart center of uh, Porto. And another one would be the University of Coimbra, as well UNESCO uh, World Heritage itself. As you can see in the bottom corner, uh, right corner of the pictures, the students from centuries ago dress up with these long dark capes that apparently uh, were inspiration for the British writer, uh, for, the, for the students on Hogwarts, that it is uh, the fiction most known uh, magician school. Uh, besides that, there would be a magician uh, coming with us along the, along the trip, and in that, uh, the uh, kids would be uh, attending to some of the um, tricks that he would be performing, and then after, later on, they could try to, to perform as well. Uh, in addition to that, there's the option to do a private cruise tour in the Douro River, which is the main river that crosses uh, port. In this case as well, we could go in a traditional boat uh, from Portugal and pass by a port winery that who doesn't like port wine whenever being in Portugal, right? As JC was saying, we usually connect more uh, winery experiences with adult experiences, but depending on the time of the year, if in harvest time, kids can go all over the wineries and pick up uh, themselves the, the grapes from the, from the vineyards so they can have a real hands-on experience. And as well, they can even uh, experience themselves how wine was done back in the old days and as well step on top of the, on the, of the grapes. So, well, once that we have talked about the magical experience in Portugal, we will jump to uh, the Mediterranean Sea and we're gonna start talking about the pirate and sailing experience in Ibiza. We all know that Ibiza is mostly known for the party and clubbing scene, but it is an ideal destination because of the plethora of things to do for kids and, and family that actually put together relax, comfort, and fun. We can arrange a whole day in a catamaran where actually families and kids can enjoy a whole day in the blue turquoise colored waters of the Mediterranean, the breeze of the sea, and actually get familiar with the laid back, back, back by, vibes sorry, of the island. In this day, we could organize many different kinds of water sports, like for example, guided, the snorkeling tours, the stand-up paddle boards for families that it's picking up so much lately as well. We could organize uh, water jets, inflatables, and depending on the time of the year, we could actually make kids participate in turtle releasing activities. This would depend because there's like different local associations that are very connected to sustainable traveling that actually uh, heal the uh, wounded uh, and marine life. So whenever uh, they're already uh, healthy, they release and liberate them to the sea so they can continue with their lives. Um, besides that, it is very important to mention that pirates and corsairs have a very, very important role in the history of Ibiza, mostly between the 17th and the 19th century. That important it was that actually loads of the architecture have a big influence related, for example, to all the fortresses and watchtowers that were built. Regarding to that matter, there is the option to arrange a private, a real 
pirate ship where the families can actually get dressed up with real pirate customs and actually do either a shooting or a filming in this in the ship so then after they can take uh, they, they take it as a present back home and we can't leave Ibiza without talking about the infinite sunsets all those reddies and orange colors are something that well are considered one of the most spectacular ones in the entire world so we can arrange an exclusive and relaxing sunset experience while the kids have the option to have a private lesson with an international DJ. We all know that the top DJs around the world go through uh, throughout the year to Ibiza to perform in some of the highest uh, high-end like uh, clubs, but we have the option to have a more personal experience and just have a one-to-one -one lesson with them. So then after kids can make their creativity uh, fly and then actually they can make their own music uh, that then after can share with the families. So, well, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed these two experiences and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, John. That was wonderful. I mean, Harry Potter and DJing, this really is a seminar on kids and children. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we don't go far from John. I would say we just go opposite his desk. Uh, that's where we find the not so young, not assistant, but very knowledgeable Sonia. So um, Sonia, whenever you want, re be ready to speak about the Basque Country. Okay, thank you very much for being here again with us. Um, I would like to share with you two activities um, that take place in the northern Spain area where I'm based. Um, first of all, maybe um, everybody who's a parent here uh, eventually thought that traveling with kids is, is, is hard, okay? But something we learned from this pandemic is that working with kids at home is hard, not traveling. So, um, First of all, I would like to share with you a place which is not far from Bilbao, where we are. It's a place called Plencia. Um, it's just about 30 minutes drive from Bilbao, a city you probably all know because of the Guggenheim Museum, because of contemporary architecture. Uh, but Bilbao is also very close to these seaside locations, which are beautiful. They are just gorgeous. And actually, Plencia is, is, is the kind of place where people from Bilbao have a second home and they spend their, their holidays there. And let me tell you that I personally think that every family and every kid deserves uh, a summer in Plencia. It's the kind of place that you remember as an adult and thinking about, oh, I spent the summer there and it was great, it was fun, it was, you know, it's, it's a place where you build such family memories. Well, there is something very unique in Plencia in this bay that you can see on the picture, on the big picture of the left. And it's an underwater winery. That, this means that there is, there is a project um, which brings um, bottles of wine of the, of the different regions of Spain and they store them on the, um, on the bottom of the sea uh, to study the influence of tide and, and sea water on the aging of wine, okay? So you can even do um, like um, wine tasting based on trying wine before, um, before the sea and after the sea influence, which is something very, very particular. So we can organize for you a, a boat tour to, through the bay so you can go up until the place where the, these cages are stored at the bottom of the sea. And with a crane, the, the, the cages are lifted and with the help of professional divers, so they can bring them, bring them on the boat and you can try the wine. Um, but this all seems, seems like to be like a very grown up activity, but there is another thing about Plenty and is that it's a very good place for water sports. So we can organize for you not only surfing, but also paddle surf and kayaking in the very same bay where this uh, winery is located. So your kids or, or teenagers, they can enjoy the very same activity you are enjoying as grown-ups, 
but from the different point of view of a stand-up paddle board or, or a kayak, which is really fun. So this is really an activity that you can do as a family uh, and everyone can enjoy it from a different point of view, okay? And from Plencia, I would like to jump to a different type of, of activity, which is also very traditional in the Basque country. I'm talking about Hai Alai. Hai Alai is an expression that has become world famous uh, thanks to this sport. And Hai Alai means in Basque literally something like happy party or something like that. Everything seems to be about a party in here. And during the 20th century, Basque migrants um, who moved to different parts of the world, such as America, Mexico, the Philippines, South America, Cuba, and so on, they brought their traditions with them. And one of them was this sport, okay? And it's, as it's really spectacular, it became very popular during the 20th century. Um, just let me tell you that this is the fastest uh, boat sport in the world. Um, the Guinness record is 188 miles per hour, 188 miles. Just keep in mind that baseball, for example, uh, has a, a top speed of 108 miles. Okay, so this is much faster. And um, so it's really, um, really, a, it's really a show. And it's played in a, in a specific type of, of um, stadiums or uh, pelota courts, which are called frontones. Um, in the Basque country, every single village, every single town, no matter how small it is, has a fronton. And if there isn't, then it's not on the map, okay? You're not there. So uh, we, this is actually an activity we can organize in many different places in, of the Basque country. And it's an activity also that both grown-ups and kids can enjoy equally. Uh, we take you to a fronton where you can privately enjoy a demo with professional players, where they will show you how the, mm, the baskets are handmade, how the balls are handmade, um, how they um, play and they throw the ball against the wall and they catch it back, which is really, really difficult. And you also learn about the atmosphere of a match, about, uh, about betting, because betting is part of the experience somehow. So they inform how, how people usually bet in this sport. And in the end, you can go down to the court and try yourself with the help of this, with the help of the players, which is something really amazing and really unique. And I recommend you all to, to try this. So I hope you, you really like this and these activities and I really look forward to welcome you back again in Spain and Portugal. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonia. You really almost make me want to have kids again, but no, uh, it's, a, it's a closed door. <laughs> As Abele mentioned in the introduction, um, we have uh, Lilian in the south of Spain taking a break. So I was supposed to replace her in this webinar and supposed to start with an activity that the kids love to do. We have a, um, a lady who is a fashion designer for flamenco dresses and she owns a modeling school and uh, we normally do a workshop where moms can try the flamenco dresses and see the last collections because she is a big name within the industry. Um, and at the same time, the girls and the kids get to have, you know, their makeup, their hair, they get dressed as a flamenco dancer, female, male, and, and she has her own modeling school. So she has a runway. And at some point I decided that I wasn't going to do that specifically for the southern part of Spain because um, dressing up kids and setting up a modeling runway is something that could be done pretty much everywhere. So I'm throwing that as an idea that could be adjusted pretty much anywhere in Spain and Portugal. Same thing with the, the cooking lessons. Um, we can go for something that goes beyond cookies or beyond cakes, we can try 
to you know make children understand more about gastronomy more about food about nutrients and all of that and this is something that again can be done pretty much everywhere um we also thought about the legos uh workshop which i know is something maybe you carry on your own flight just to you know make sure that they keep busy during the long hours of the transcontinental flight but depending on where you are and depending how into it they are uh, we have true specialists of, of uh, Lego constructions um, in town and we could set up a room somewhere like where while the parents are visiting masterpieces or a museum so in, in a room within the facility we can sort of uh, produce a Lego workshop which is easier to do as a cooking lesson in a museum something like that so the idea behind this without any slides is just to tell you that um, when you've been there, you have plenty of ideas, you know a lot how to handle with kids. And this is the only thing I want you to remember when you're planning on Spain and Portugal for families, um, your people here at Spain Collection, we know what we're doing because we have been there and we feel your pain. So. That was it from my end. Now back to Giuseppe and Brad and Naben, of course. I want to be a kid again. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm just questioning my age because all these activities looked more fun to me than, than maybe some kids even. But uh, that was an amazing, creative and great ideas. Thank you for sharing um, all of this with us. And it's certainly a side of Spain I haven't seen yet. Um, so I would love to, you know, come, come and and pretend I'm 12 years old again. Um, so we have a number, a lot of comments, um, which are really nice that everybody is sharing with us. And, um, but um, the questions I see have been sort of answered along the way. So if, you're, if you um, can look in the chat uh, box, you'll see all of those. Um, any further questions, I, I think we can take um, offline, um, but it's been a great presentation. Uh, we all want to thank you for the time that you've shared with us today, and we look forward to the next one. Uh, Benny, do you want to close it out here? Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Benny. <laughs> now, sorry. Actually, let me tell you this short story that happened to me in America when I, when I, when I was living there and I, I met you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. I took my two kids with me to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, while I was meeting clients, my husband forgot the kids in the elevator. Um, and well, considering that the building was like 56 floors, my oh, kids nice. spent about half an hour in the elevator. This is not an activity, but this is something that <laughs> you should talk with your husband about before doing something with the family because <laughs> I'm now talking seriously maybe uh, you didn't realize that I uh, probably you did and I want to point that the activities we are suggesting include the whole family because the easy Good. thing here is that you take parents this way and the kids the other way but uh, no, um, it's not that we are feeling guilty because we don't pay attention to the kids that we do, but we want to make something together and all have fun. And, you know, when you get back to the hotel, you feel like the day has been a family day that we all know that nowadays is not easy. It's not easy because we all work a lot because kids are going to school, because pandemic is not allowing us to travel in a lot. And we do think and believe in uh, at Spain Collection that this is one of the most popular part of the company once you are able to come to Spain. Let's do things together. I can imagine myself and the catamaran in Ibiza and my kids jumping on the water uh, and at the same time, fighting as pirates, you know, so I think it can be really, really fun. And security is something that we didn't mention, but I hope you, you, you believe me if I tell you that security is something that we, we I mean, um, we have it very, very clear. So kids must feel secure and parents 
somehow will be close to the kids. And Spain is so funny, so lively, so full of activities, city, uh, places of the beaten track. You can go to a forest and just look for the, you know, vegetables or trees or things that can be interesting for anyone, the sea uh, in all the islands of the country. So today's workshop was very important for us to show you because we think it's gonna be important after this time we are spending, all of us. About the questions, I think that my colleagues were answering to each of you, uh, but I, I am not sure if there is anyone left. If you can There's tell actually me. some open questions. I'm just okay. gonna. Okay, let, uh, let me see because I might not be the person to answer. Yeah, there's a question from Anna asking, do you know if the running of the balls will happen this year? Oh my God, again, this is a question, guys. The running of the bulls is a question in Spain. I want to run. <laughs> I just saw you. I got uh, my shirt. Okay, let's change it for the nice balcony views, okay? What do you think, Olga? Are you going to lower clients to run with the bulls? Uh, no. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Well, at this very moment, in this precise minute, it is not officially cancelled. It looks like it might end up being cancelled, but officially it's still on. So, yeah. but it's not looking good. Stay tuned. I see, I see. Okay, you have a museum there, Brad. You have to show me one thing. <laughs> I do. But some of it the is, things might be is, antique, a little bit like old-fashioned, okay? I will yeah. send you something new. <laughs> Time to update it, yeah. Time to come back to Spain. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I, I have to tell you guys, everyone here, that um, once my, my friends, Joseph and uh, Brad, let me go to the United States, it's going to be 24 hours before I take my ticket, okay? And after that, we will, we will plan a couple of fun trips every year for a while to recover the lost time. <laughs> so um, I think you will be happy to, to come with us. And because, I mean, we will be so thrilled and so delighted to welcome you and show you lively all that we, we can here in Spain. So I will go there and you will come here. So it's, uh, you, will, you will see that I won't run with the bulls. I tell you guys, um, I'm not <laughs> no, very good running. <laughs> I won't suggest that. I, I don't, don't recommend that as, as well. But um, I just wanted to um, note that, um, you know, um, we are really, really proud to have Abeni and, and her team you. join us. Um, you know, we, we also recently added DMC in Morocco, which is Casablanca Tours, but also in Barcelona, we've added El Palace Hotel. Mm. And these are going to be great partners for, for Avena and her team there too. And very good, very good friends. I'm very close to us, five minutes walking yes. from our office, I have exactly. to say. So, yeah. um, you know, Spain is going to be a big, big focus when we get going and we're all moving again. And I just, I cannot wait myself to come back. So thank you all for your time again. And um, you know, we look forward to the next session, which we're, we're going to be choosing a topic on um, in the next few minutes, probably. Yes, <laughs> and that will be on March 24th, it's a Wednesday um, at, the, uh, at the same time. Um, so hopefully you'll join us and we'll be uh, a few more uh, after that, uh, which will be highlighting different aspects of travel in Spain and Portugal. And, as you can see, this team has been very creative and I cannot wait to see what, the, what will be the next topic in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Let me tell you something. Um, I don't see your faces, but each time we do a webinar, I forget about all that we are suffering because I feel so proud of all of you, team, reps, and clients. So among all of us, will push the industry and it's going to be fine sooner uh the sooner the, the better yeah eventually thank soon. you <laughs> yeah thank you so much well thank you everyone you've been amazing uh can't wait to see you in person soon and uh in the meantime we'll see you in a couple of weeks uh please join yeah. us again and i just want to remind you that all these webinars that we're doing you can actually see it on our youtube page 
where you can link it from our website. So you, the recording is always there available whenever you want them to review them. And you can also see the previous sessions about traditions. Uh, the first one, which was about introducing uh, the Spain collection and many more to come. Thank you so much. Thank you.